had to disappoint them and um, tell them that um, Kai wasn't, but uh, luckily today he is. Um, he's a trader with a huge um, experience, um, and um, he's going to talk about Nadex and um, the global trade room approach to um, using that market and the, the partnership they have. So, Kai, the room is yours. Okay, hey, I was actually thinking of talking about my 7-Eleven rule. Starting off with that. <laughs> that, that would be fun too. <laughs> no, it was great to uh, follow the Southern Gentleman Tom. Um, excellent. <laughs> I will um, address questions. Um, let me let me get through part of the presentation. And uh, Yana, thank you very much. Yes, um, Morgan did a great job in, in pairing us um, back to back with uh, myself and Tom. I what, what a stacked day it was. Nice bench of very, uh, lots, lots of different professionals, lots of different uh, markets, et cetera, as promised. And it took almost all afternoon for someone to actually talk about the 5%, the 5% uh, of the way that people, you know, the 5% of the success rate. So. I am, uh, Tom did a, a great little teaching on the Nadex, and it, um, you know, I won't have to go, I won't have to um, parlay that, or I, I'll just parlay it, and I won't continue in depth on that. But I will do is I like a lot of his concepts, and I talk about one of the things I discuss is know about, know yourself, know your competition, know your strengths, know your weaknesses. And you just heard, a lot of this stuff from Tom already. So I'm repeating, um, you know, he's been around since, uh, I guess he said 87. Uh, you know, I'm a little young, younger than that. I won't age myself just yet. But it's very important to understand that, uh, check, 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 sound check. Check, 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 sound check. Okay, I'm, just, I'm coming through. You bet. The, the beautiful thing about this uh, business is once you figure it out, uh, it really doesn't change on you. And because the more that it does change, the more it reverts back to the basics. And the basics are what Tom talked about, tape reading and um, order flow or order flow analysis. And nothing has changed. Nothing has changed from the, you know, Jesse Livermore in that it's the large it's the large money that moves the markets. It's now, yes, the large money is programming uh, a lot of the volume, and and um, you know we talked about, or it was talked about earlier about the HFTs, and that is running about 70% of the daily volume. But it's the institutions that are controlling it, so it's always the big money, and it's the that is, in my opinion, that's the money that you should be following, if. You know, if you are reading any kind of success books, you're not gonna you're not gonna read a success book of a failure or someone who's down on their luck. You're gonna what you do want to see though is you want to see that success book. You want to have that guy have a down on your luck story, but then have a recovery and move forward and to great great lengths. So it's not you don't want to ride his coattail when he's down on his luck. What you want to do is you want to ride his coattail after he's figured it all out and he's and he's breaking through to all levels and creating empires. That's when you want to ride their coattails. So it's it's a, my opinion, my strongest opinion and my and my experience to ride the coattails of the successful traders, the institutional traders, the the big money. Everybody following me so far? Does that all make sense? So I think that what I should do is probably give you just a little bit of a background um, for those that didn't request me today. Hello, my name is Kai Whitney. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rihanna, for that. Um, I'm going to just touch base on a quick, a quick presentation. I'm going to drop between the presentation and actual real charts. And I'm going to talk to you about the 5% club and that 5% club and how we read the markets. 
how we read the markets is through the tape reading and, 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 and what has been known as order flow. And it's all based upon what's something that's called the auction market theory or auction market value theory. And these are the type of things that are taught at the professional level. Is we're not looking necessarily at, you know, what is a bullish harami and a three cloud, you know, three cloud pattern and a baby out with the bath water and lightning cloudy shimoka. You know, we're not doing that, um, or they're not doing that. So yes, I am with a group, a trading group or a global trading group. We uh, we've come together with all walks of life. Um, many of them, many of the traders are ex-institutional, um, bankers, uh, pit traders, as, and some of us, some of them are as recent as, you know, brand new to the, brand new to the markets in six months. Now, of course, I count the guys that have uh, found us within six months of, of starting trading as the lucky ones because you're, they're riding the coattails early. So that is amazing, and um, we congratulate them all the time. But what, they, what we do at the Global Trade Room, com is we educate and we trade so but we also understand that we're there you know trading is a process and it's a marathon and not a sprint and when unfortunately most folks find us it's normally on their last count and their emotions are high and so we we have empathy for them uh, because what we try to do is we try to keep our entry level um, you know, the barriers to entry quite low, uh, it's specifically after we have a conversation with them, we find out where they are uh, in their trading, and we see if it's a good fit and we bring them aboard. And what we do for them is we have our main trader, a head trader, who runs the morning sessions, uh, is a registered CTA, so it's called a commodities trading advisor, so he can actually manage funds and actually advise on when to buy and when to sell. And so we have an opportunity to overlook the shoulders of a professional trader, watching him through his thoughts, his analysis, and, and you actually get to see the trades being placed. Uh, in addition to being placed, they're called out live with the exact entries, the exact exits, and the stops, and when to move the stops, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we do this because it's very important to understand that we have been where you are today, and there is there are opportunities to give back. And this opportunity uh, for everyone to give back is available. And once you once once you obviously figure this all out, because there's a there's an evil little um, a evil little thing that happened to us all. We were all sold a bill of goods, and that bill of goods was back during the go-go uh, 90s that all you needed to do was buy some retracement of an eight period MA or 50 period, 100 period, 200 period, and you just buy it and, and it goes up. And, or you get onto, um, you get onto an IPO and, and it gaps up 300% and you cash out. And that was a bill of goods that were sold that it's long and strong only and that's the only way to go. And, and unfortunately, that's when most of us got involved and lost most of our money. And then we just probably, um, you know, we're just continuing from there. What is unfortunate is in the retail sector was set up simply to provide liquidity uh, and uh, get commissions and volume. And it's, it is um, the markets themselves specifically, they are, uh, specifically futures markets, and I hate to be breaking this to you, but they are set up for the institutions, and they give the institutions 100% transparency. So the, the so the institutions know exactly where the commercial the vet or the the commercial traders in the institutions, and these are commercial traders who trade for the largest corporations in the world, and governments worldwide, and basically hedge uh, inflation costs and food costs and energy costs and things of that nature. And they'll provide um, they'll provide levels uh, so they know value at all times. And the thing that we learned in the beginning was price, price action, price act, price means everything. 
and unfortunately, the most difficult lessons for us to all to learn, and this takes time, soul, soul searching and everything to, to get through, is that price really in its truest form is simply an advertisement. And you think of an advertisement, something that we're bombarded with all the time, flash sales, Groupon discounts, um, you know, $199 phone with two-year contract, uh, this and that. So um, what I would like to do is flip everything since since Tom opened up the gates to the 5%, and um, he's already taken my 7-Eleven rule. I might as well, which I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't have it, Tom. Um, what I will do is go back to the basics for you, and that's the very, very basics of the old school tape reading, okay? It is of my opinion that the best traders out there the most accurate traders are tape readers, and you heard it from somebody else who uh, I've never met. So, globaltraderoom.com, and I'm going to discuss three keys to the coding order flow and tape, tape reading. Now, as I mentioned before, basically it's all about an edge, and if you aren't one of the institutions who know the value of the commodity that you're buying and selling or the stock that you're buying and selling, then um, then you have to personally know your strengths and weaknesses and more importantly competition and that's what I want to talk to you about today is know your competition know your markets and sh the question you need to ask yourself is should you be trading stocks should you be trading stocks with uh, different price points should you be trading um, you know biotech stocks or something more something more not as erratic uh, obviously, if you have a skill, a scientific skill, and you, and you have that background, you may have an insight, an edge that you can use in analyzing that um, that, that biotech stock. The last thing you want to do, though, is you the last thing you want to do is actually read someone's opinion in the form of a research piece. That research piece literally is a sales piece. It's a sales piece uh, for the retail divisions of the firms so that they could provide liquidity to their corporate clients. And what happens in this is there are hidden trade locations that occur. And no matter how glossy the, the no matter how glossy the, or rosy the, um, uh, the research paper is, what you can't hide is the trade locations or the trades. And that's going to come through in the form of time and sales and order flow. So I'm going to show you, um, or I'm going to talk to you about hidden trade locations. I'm going to talk to you about an institutional bias, why, why that 5% survives. And I'm also going to talk about something very important. Actually, Tom even talked about it as well. It's, it's the sequencing. It's the patterns. that are. It's, it's what these giant computers are doing out there when they're jamming the algos and the HFTs. They're looking for their data mining for patterns. Okay? Everybody ready for this? We good? Oh, you know what? Maybe I should, hold on a second. Maybe I should talk about uh, myself a little bit, why you shouldn't even listen to me. Um, I have some experiences as of 1994, and I started off as an analyst. Fundamentals was my game. And I started with a, a, a private equity firm, a hedge, front, hedge firm, uh, not you know, private equity hedge fund, and it was my job to identify uh, the mergers and acquisitions, and the deals. So um, that firm went um, belly up, lost funding, you know, 94, 95, 96. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, that's me. That's me. Hello. Um, and I went to a small investment banking boutique where I did grunt, sheet, grunt, grunt work, and it's, it's not fun. It, you never see light, and it, you don't want to do it. So I did, I did stay along the investment banking route, and I went to a firm called Swiss Bank. And Swiss Bank is, oh, that's me. Hello. Swiss Bank. There you go. Swiss Bank obviously is, a, is in Switzerland. But um, this is, uh, I had the opportunity to go through their professional program through their training program. And there were 200 of us in the world. 
at that, uh, in that year, 1999. And after a year and a half, after a year and a half, there was probably less than, there was definitely less than a dozen, dozen closer to five, five of us left. And the ones that survived were kind of the ones that started to think for themselves and not just take, not just take the research and stuff that were uh, down, that were basically, basically, oh, basically just, um, gosh, I don't want to be too uh, down on everybody here. Uh, just, you know, lipstick with pig, you know, or pig with lipstick, you guys have heard of that before? Okay. So this is their, this is the trading floor. This is their main trading floor. It's um, two football fields long. And there are 1,500 traders, and we're put into pods, and we would have, you know, algo guy, we'd have research guys, obviously, and we'd cover baskets, uh, different markets, and um, there, this was the, this is one of the largest. This is actually Guinness Book of World Record, largest trading floor in the world. So I have, what, why am I even spending time with this? Is I left uh, Swiss Bank and I went to a you know, another firm called Bear Stearns, and I had the opportunity there to trade for some of the largest, it may have been the largest, I'm not sure, but it was $35 billion, a private equity fund. And it was within this fund that really, I really got to hone my skills because the buys and the sells were so large that I could basically crush any market, um, crush any market and, um, it would take literally weeks to do so, to, uh, to accumulate or to sell a position, distribute shares. And so I have an idea when it comes to this uh, institutional bias. Uh, there's a lot of pressure at that, at that level. And, um, and, and I can identify in the tape and the order flow those hidden trade locations because I actually know exactly the game that they're playing. And so I've, I've worked over the last few years to refine my tools and and uh, my tape reading skills, and and about ten months ago, I, I searched I searched out a, a programmer and started working with them. And today we have a, a, a there's a tool called Ninja Order Flow Trader. And um, I think that would be oh I missed my after my best trade in the world actually was seeing the writing on the wall at Bear Stearns and leaving three days after Christmas 2006 being able to short the entire markets over at a prop firm called SunGuard Capital Markets, so I was on their Ascent Capital Desk. So anyway, um, through 06 and into 09, um, then, they, then all of the stocks became illegal to short or borrow, and so I took some time off from my first board. Okay, enough with that. Let's get to hidden trade locations. I want to talk about why location is everything. And it's I, I love, you know, I love having you know an experienced um, person such as Tom um, talk about the markets, and um, you know I am a student of the markets and I love the markets and that's probably my survival is I just didn't take no and I just kept going. So why size is everything and it's important to understand these and it was important for me to spend a little bit of time on my background just to you know be able to give you a little color on the three points I'm going to. Uh, teach you. Um, one of the problems I see most traders I work with is that they don't understand trade locations. And in short, trade locations is all about being able to identify and at all levels, institutional levels, corporate levels, everything. They need to know where value is and where a market is going to uh, or an institution or another company that they can trade that share with, whether there's a probability, a high probability that he's going to defend that area or, um, you know, by selling or buying. And you need to be able to locate these. And by doing so, you have opportunities. Now, the, the confirmation that you get when you're in the right trade, obviously, we've all benefited from that. Even if you were, if you even if you started out in the go-go days, you buy something that just jams in your favor, right? Well, what is that? What what is that? What makes that? What actually makes that stock move so quickly? Well, it's 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 called a, a, a an imbalance, and it's, it's an imbalance in price. 
something price got away from value and, it, and it's running and running and it's advertising for higher prices. But what no one really talks to you about is what is it doing going up? If, or in a, in a situation, something's going up. If, if the commercials and the institutions know what value is, the market is going to search for price upwards in searching for the value by finding the other side of that trade, which in this case would be a seller. If it's if price is coming outside of value and it's running down as the market is right now, what is the market searching for to find value? It's looking for buyers. And isn't it funny that Tom mentioned that back in the day he was told uh, he w he was told that um, you know after a big sell off like this you be sh you should be looking to buy versus sell. <laughs> it's so like I said, it's just, this has never changed. So you have to think like an institution to trade in this institutional. I'm not going to call it rigged, like the book, but let's just say it is rigged. Well, isn't it better to understand the game and the and the playing field? and what they're looking at and doing, and the benefit that we have, and it is my opinion that, in my experience, that there has been no time in history when, with the advancements of technology and the speed and the execution and the, and the low barrier to entry, that, that um, what presentation is this? Talking about the markets. The barriers to entry are low. That we have never been, that we have never been, on a on a level on a level playing field or an opportunity to play at the same in the same game, until now. So size is everything. Size matters, and what people need to understand is that the most you know most of us you know whether we kick a stream and, and whether it's you know the HFTs and there's books being written and yada yada yada. And the, the fact is the fact. It was never meant for us anyway. So we might as well, if we're going to play this game, you might as well play it right. It's like playing in the Super Bowl. You don't just start off in, you know, in, as a rookie and join the Super Bowl. So one of the things that is important to understand is location. And that will show up outside, you know, basically around value and outside of those value areas. When I say value, does everybody understand what I mean? Or does anybody understand... Does everyone understand how to identify value? Okay. Let me do this real quick. I don't know if that many people understand. Okay. This regular bar chart. Notice how uh, this is a crude markets five-minute chart. Notice how this price had a swing high of 102.70, then came down to 102.19, then came up to 102.49, and traded around, traded around, traded around, traded around. So this is the time period. This is the price period. When you can identify value, where price oscillates around itself, it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You are to assume that that is considered a fair price. You're to assume that it's neither the buyers or the sellers that have the advantage. So yes, price consolidating is value. So consolidation. Can, every, can anybody else, can everybody tell me where, where price is consolidated aside from this? Just in this chart right here? How quickly do you think you can do that?
doesn't have to be exact exact numbers, but just tell me uh, should I look lower, should I look higher? Okay. So up here, what are we doing? We are right here, right? Pretty much right bang, smack dab right there. Okay? Yeah. 103, 20 ish. I can draw this with a crayon. It doesn't have to be exact. But I can also find an area here overlapping value. Right? Like that. Then I can also find one here. So what if I told you that all the market's job to do is to search for value? And why does it want to search for value? Well, value is where the largest institutions and uh, hedge funds can put can get most of their business done. That what that's what an exchange is there for. So the exchange um, on their screens, they have, you know, we had, we, we could identify, we actually knew who the other side was at all times. And so we would, we would get an order in and there would be a range that we could work with. Let's say with crude markets, it was, a, you know, I had to, um, their UPS was hedging a fleet of their trucks or United Airlines was hedging their, their fuel costs for their planes or a leasing company, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, or a bank, a small, uh, you know, mid, mid, you know, even a large bank, hedging near interest rate risk. Well, they uh, they know where their value is, so they give you a level. So it's our job to get paid to buy and sell as much as we can within here, but th but then we're also judged. We're judged on something that's called volume weighted average price, and it's going to be just the 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 price uh, that trades the volume and it's going to be a, a moving average and um, it's basically a, a, a watermark and if I'm buying I don't want to report above that watermark back to the client otherwise I won't get the rest of the order if I'm selling I don't want to report uh, below that watermark I won't get the rest of the order you follow me so far so it's all about doing business and getting more business, volume flow. Now, what we would do is we would trade outside of those edges of value to better our average or to better our print back to the client. So what I want you to take from here today, if you don't take anything else, is learn how to take find a range develop a range, and then notate that as value. Or I like to say, this is these are retail prices up here at 1340, okay? For instance, Apple can do a phone for 199, for 199 with a two year mark. Everyone in here knows that's the value of that phone, 199, right? Now, if they discount it, if they wanna gain market share, what do they do? They discount the price. Say, what if they did a $99? No two-year contract. There would be lines around, there would be mass chaos knowing the society, and there would definitely be lines around the blocks, right? Well, what if they said, okay, you got $99, no contract, but I only have 100000 to sell. So what's going to happen is, this volume is going to give time or price, I'm sorry, price is going to oscillate around this over time, and we have to assume that volume is occurring, that trades are occurring. So that 199 Apple idea is all day, all long, all day, right? We know the value of that. But if it trades outside of value for a discount, what's the demand there? The demand will be high for that product. Okay, I have a fleet of US UPS trucks. I have to have an order, and if I get it down at a discount, well, gosh, I'm going to look good. If I if it gets above outside of value, well, gosh, I'm going to uh, create some liquidity, bring in some income. I'm going to sell outside of that. So this is actually how institutions operate. They buy 
outside of value and they sell outside of value and they do as much business as they can in here so the market right now over the last uh, week or so has been distributing shares so the market is still searching for buyers it hasn't found them yet now guess where if the market the crude market here at 103 if the market is coming down and starts to reprice for whatever reason and it needed uh, for whatever reason it starts pricing down and discounting where do you think it's gonna find buyers what level what an imbalance occurs between a level between here and here is called an imbalance and you and it'll show up in in the tape so it's so in other words this is a balanced market this is an imbalanced market when it price moves higher through here and the market's only going to do a the market does this and only this you guys it trades up it's an imbalance to balance to imbalance to balance to imbalance to balance and that's all it's doing it's doing to search for value so if it starts searching for value outside of this market it's searching for buyers where do you think the buyers are going to show up they're going to show up from here this spot and they're going to show up from this area because when market was in balance here the buyers took over and they're in, currently in control so crude is bull the big money the big money is the only money that can move the markets outside of this value okay so let me go real quick continue oh let me do this real quick um, the reason why I spent time on that uh, is because no one else did and I think it's very important and it's under it's it's best to understand what price is it's best to understand what price is and always ask yourself the context if if I'm trading at 103 what is the context it's a discount to value and that's all it is is price and if price came outside of this area and then started to um, trade around that same area that 103 level it would be maybe there'd be a new agreed upon level but it makes a bunch of sense I love it so the thing about the market is it's not voodoo it's been the same thing going back to the 19th century with a, you know a teenage kid um, you know Livermore, Livermore and this is the same thing how the, the everything operates Walmart Starbucks the, your gas pump everything so there's things that you can do this I, I nicknamed this area retail so you call this whole retail now let me ask you something if you so choose to get into this business which I've just said is is you know well it's been a book written about it it's called rigged if it's rigged um, and you get into this business and you say well I need to buy I, I want to buy something well if you buy something then then what are your odds of buying something what are your odds at buying that um, that Apple iPhone at 199 and making a profit off of it if that was your business but what if you bought that at 99 and you know the demand was still back up here at 199 then you have an opportunity don't you so what I tell folks that when I do privates with them and I talk with them uh, in the in in the room and stuff I go guess what find retail and then put a big old X through it because guess what the biggest buyers in the world are trading in there trying to get business done all they're gonna do is eat your lunch the algos are gonna take your ones and twos and they're gonna match them up like sausage it's called a sausage fest sausage hour all you're gonna do is provide your what, what was what did I say the retail was set up for liquidity 
and commissions. So all you're going to do is play that game. Don't play it. You don't have to. I did this with no, just with understanding the concepts of the market. Exactly. Absolutely. Lost leader. So does this make sense to everybody? I think it should. Tom talked about it, supply and demand. So if you can identify value or the first person to identify value wins. Okay? So that is why the third part of this, price. That's why price is not the main factor. Value. Become a value trader, not a price action trader. Or at least understand the concepts because your competition does. Okay? Institutional bias. Well, guess what? Institutions are in the business of making money. And we, you and I are here not for just jib jabbing all day, but we're in here for making money as well, right? Well, guess what? The only way that you can control, the only thing you can control in the markets is how much risk you're going to take. So I want you to take a new, I want you to develop a new mantra. Write it down. Kai, losses come first. Losses are more important than profits. Okay? And then lastly, what I have noticed in doing, I've only been doing this since um, it's been two years now since I've been doing this. Um, I, after I found my mentor and, and, and learned you know, truly how to take the institutional side and marry it with the retail side and learn how to uh, do this not as an institutional trader uh, but as a retail trader, uh, then it all started to make sense and I help educate and bring other, others up to speed. So I, what I did not know is most of the folks I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but most folks are starting their accounts with five, as little as $5,000, $10,000, $25,000. I just couldn't believe it. And then they're talking about buying five lots, 10 lots on $25,000. Are you kidding me? Do you know how much you're controlling there? You have to, you have to, and, what I, and I guess what's most sad is that, and we all did it, is that carrot. That advertising carrot of stick, that advertising uh, price is I made $11,000. How much did you make? Come join me and make $11,000 as well. Well, that's such hogwash. It's ridiculous. How much risk did you take to make that $11,000 is the question you should be asking. Because losses come first. They're more important than profits. And please... Retail traders have taken on way too much risk, and that is where that Nadex product comes into play. It is an, it's an actual exchange, North American Derivatives Exchange. Now, yes, it's derivatives, but it's set up for the retail trader, not the institutional trader. And so you can identify your risk levels, and you know exactly. And if we have time, I'll go through the markets, and I'll tell you the trades I'm going to put on tomorrow. Because, and, and you guys can guess, based on my analysis or discussion here, what do you guys think I'm looking to do tomorrow? Take a guess. So at the end of the day, the most important thing is how good are you at risk control? Paul Tudor Jones. Yeah. Okay. So I have been developing over the last 10 months a program, a platform, an entire series that takes tape reading to the next level. It's not just order flow. It's institutional order flow. And it's being able to take my knowledge from the street, from the firms, I wasn't on the street, from the firms where we had the access and we knew the size and where value is and where Jimmy from Goldman was at or, or Bill at Lehman was at. We knew where they were because we ran in the same circles and we traded the same stocks. So it's very important to know what they're doing. So before I get into that, 
um, the very last and most important thing we need to know about is the sequence factor. I've nicknamed it order flow sequence. And it's data mining at its best. It's basically data mining for what are the institutions doing. Okay, so let me pause on this. I, I, I'll, remind me, I'll get back to a sales pitch. I promise you. Okay, so Ninja, why Ninja is a question. Um, right now, right now, the best, the best thing I could do was, was to um, join teams with the number one uh, program developer for the NinjaTrader platform, which is called Ninja Caters. And we worked on it together for 10 months. And the reason NinjaTrader is because it's a free platform. So remember, I've, I've figured out that you guys are coming to the market with five grand, 10 grand. There's not much left for the education, and unfortunately, the education you're getting is, you know, let's just, I don't want to poo-poo anybody. I'm sure they all have good intentions. But in my opinion, it's just not the complete message. Okay, so I want to go through and show you what this thing looks like. Because I've, I've talked about institutional bias, I've talked about this and that, I've talked about value. Okay, let me just show you a chart. Now, Tom also mentioned um, time and sales. And what's going on with my chart? Now, who here has actually sat and stared at time and sales? You're really, it's really tough. It's really tough. To, oh, I have, I have a few of these loaded on, I guess. Okay, so, you know, candlesticks, right? I learned candlesticks. I know candlestick patterns. And I, actually, this is a candlestick. These are um, these basic candlesticks, but I'm able to look inside the candlestick. <laughs> oh, I know. Like I said, you were sold a bill of goods, my friend. And I just, I'm just telling you, I just had to uncover it all for you. Just to, you know, you have to ask yourself and recommit, recommit. You know, listen, am I really? You know, Tom mentioned this. What, what am I, one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, what have you done in your past that, that you think you can get to the 5%? Maybe you're a good student. That's, that'll chalk it up. Maybe you're in the military. Maybe you're a professional football player. Maybe you're an excellent chess player or a programmer. You got to delve in. Maybe you're a doctor. You're obviously smart enough to, pa to pass the exams. Maybe you're an engineer and numbers make sense to you. Whoa, okay, well then guess what? The market is all about the numbers, isn't it? Yes, so this is bid any asks. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell me I'm gonna have a level to trade. And this level is going to be, let me see if I can, uh, where is, how do I draw on this thing? Um, I don't know how to draw on this with the uh, presentation. Sorry about that. No problem. Yeah. Um, so FX. So F FX uh, stocks, futures. Everything that has a bid and the ask. Right now, I have this set up to run volume. So this is measuring volume, because price without volume, top of their top. Okay, top. Uh, oh, here. Right here. Okay, thank you. So the top up here, um, got it, okay. So tape, tape reading. So uh, there's a tape reading aspect to this if you want, if you want it, but for me, it's just a bunch of numbers going by. 
what this does is it simply tallies and keeps track. So it's not about reading all of these numbers all the time. It's about trade location. You find your trade location and then you stop the trade as it's coming into your location. And you, you weigh what's going on. Are the buyers more aggressive or the sellers more aggressive? If I'm looking to, if I'm looking to go long, well, I need, to, I need evidence that aggressive buyers are getting involved. And who are those aggressive buyers? They're called institutional traders. And I'll have them show up in a format where, see this cell here, there's 120, 67 here, 34 here. Well, what this is measuring when the price was at this level, 103.44, on the ask were nine that registered and 49 sold. So obviously 49 over nine is more aggressive. It's actually more than three to one, 300%. So I mark a threshold and I say, okay, look at this one. Let's look at the sequence. There's a 10 by 39, three by eight, seven by 86. And I know what you guys are thinking. Uh, this looks confusing. And as soon as I see numbers, I'm afraid I want to run. Well, I'm sorry, you can't do that because you're only looking at currently there's an ABC equation. C is all that you're looking at. There's A and B component to that C. I'm showing you how to read and to put the A and the B together. So the benefit is you're able to get into a position with less risk. Tom talked about a $300 stop, right? So we do three contract trades on every instrument, three contracts, and we work with roughly $130 per contract, uh, or excuse me, total, total. So we do three contracts on the crude, three contracts in the NASDAQ, three contracts in this, you name it. And we work on average about $130 total for those three contracts. Now, of course, in order to be that accurate, you have to understand how the market operates, and it takes work. This is not going to solve it for you, but it's going to give you at least a great idea, a great edge. So if I notice in this bar at 1440, it's a candlestick basically, I notice there's 0 by 10 up here, and there's blue line that shows out at 103, 103.40 is actually a block trade. It's telling me there was an institution that put on a sale, put on a buy so large that it had to, I have it set for 25, a block of 25 on this one. It would be a block of 184 on the ES. It would be a block of 55 on the 6E. It'd be a block of 14 on gold. Et cetera, et cetera, but a block of 25, not cumulative, adding up to, but actually a trade size 25 or long or, or larger. So this will keep track of an institution for me. Then, if price does not respect that buy, well, guess what? I have an opportunity to short. In addition, I see that as the market came up. So this buy wasn't respected, came down, sellers pressed, pressed, pressed. How do I erase? Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. So what do I do now? I can actually notate this level. I will draw, see these yellow lines that I have here? I would just do a, um, I'll just do a line and I'll draw a line out from here and from here and that block trade will get respected indefinitely let me show you okay so does everybody understand that when a, a seller an aggressive seller uh so markets markets um this is proprietary this is exclusive to um, our teachings and um, I have, I ha let me put it this way, great product, 
absolutely great product. But also, the, the product I had at the firms, the Bloomberg trade book, that's an amazing product. We're talking $3,500 a month, $2,500 without the bells and whistles a month. I can't do that. That's a huge nut. I need to have much, much better access to capital in order to trade that, uh, put that overhead cost on myself. Um, and all the others out there are great as well. I've used them all. But just like anything, something is always missing. You can always better it. So I take my knowledge and I implemented it into the tape, tape reading, the stuff that Jesse Livermore um, uh, you know, did. So don't let anybody tell you that their stuff is the only stuff because it's not true. It's called tape reading and order flow. It's just numbers. How, are, how you color it and, and develop is, is up to you. You're not, you know, that's not proprietary. What's proprietary is the knowledge that I have, the experience that I have put into this. That's it. And learning how to trade it is, is obviously key. So I'm going to notate 39, 48, 86. Notice how mar the market will pause at that level from 1440. And I didn't just pull this out, by the way. This was the actual, um, I believe this was an actual trade. Nope, there was another one here. Sorry. Uh, notice this one here. See this 163 and 106 and 144? You see this 45, 14, 50, 10, uh, 197? Let's just mark those levels off. And just know that institutions got aggressive. Sellers will become support. Sellers will also become resistance. Yeah. Perfect. Very well. Very well done. It's all about learning this and trusting yourself. But the only way you can control your emotions, specifically when you're, when you're on your last account or last few accounts, is you have to control your risk. Understand an institutional bias. Um, there was a, a very, very uh, major component uh, to risk involved. And the firm wouldn't let you get too, too short or too long against the book or anything. Unless you're, you know, big swinging and then, you, you know, you end up getting uh, labeled as a rogue trader when things don't go right and, you know, who wants that? So these levels will, will be shown up uh, as, as this seller here became resistance here, becomes re support here. This seller here becomes uh, uh, resistance here and support here. And you just simply trade off that level, trade off this level here. Uh, the trade that we were looking at today was a short from up here. Notice how, and this goes back to, by the way, it is. There's market profile concepts. There's auction market concepts. There's order flow concepts. It's the market concepts. Remember I mentioned the market is set up to be 100% transparent, and it's the institutions that understand value. So it's our job to understand value. Now, Notice how this price up here spent time, 103.49. Time here, 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 time here. That's considered value. So if the market peaks up outside of value and doesn't continue, there's no aggressive buyers. I don't see any heavy blues in here to break this out. Remember, what is momentum? Is momentum waiting for a CCI to be above 80% or waiting for the Williams percent to be above 80% or an RSI to be above 80% to then tell me it's momentum. Momentum is made by institutions. You need to understand exactly at what price it starts because they will defend that level. So I don't see them pushing higher. It was a short and it went short until and they, the, it, it, until here. And then until here, this level, and then until this level. Each one of these levels were predetermined by looking for the sequence, a selling sequence, a selling sequence. So it's all laid out there for you. This has the memory. And all you have to do is let, look back and see what's, where is the market going. And then when it gets here, you look for a specific sequence. 
and then you look for buyers to show up and you can get involved and then you have better opportunities with less, less risk, okay? Uh, where's my clock? 18 minutes, okay. So there's a lot more to that, by the way. Um, let me show you. Let me show you my profile chart, Mark, my volume profile chart. So my volume profile, this is a crude market. I have it on a 240-minute chart. This is on the far right-hand side. This is the composite. This is going to tell me the aggregated volume at price. And these are going to be a regular candlestick bar. And each one of these moves are going to show up with a value. Tell me the blue, the blue, blue area value point of control, point of control. There's ways to um, to read these and say, okay, well, if price is going higher, then I guess I should see the average price going higher. In addition to that, uh, it was mentioned algorithms today and through the week, and and um, and markets rigged and things like that. Well, the uh, those are important levels, and Tom had mentioned that the algorithms, or the programs, are going to be turned on at standard deviation levels, ones and twos, right? He said, past three and a half, don't even touch it. It's going. There's more. What it's doing is it's pricing in information that we don't know about yet, okay? So in between ones and twos are important. So I have this orange line to tell me based on the settlement, settlement, the close of the market, give me the one standard deviation, two standard deviations, or whatever standard deviation I prefer, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, and I just uh, go in there and I notate it in a settlement standard deviation. Minus two here on the downside, minus eight, minus two on the top side, plus eight on the, sorry, plus eight, plus two. So again, all I wanna know is what are the computers doing? Where is, where is, remember the computers are run by the institutions. Where are those gonna, where do they have a good probability of coming on? Standard deviation levels, away from the mean, away from the average price. So if I take that, um, if I take if I take that very simple concept and I say this is value and I say the prices up here are, are premium, premium, prices down here are discount and then the price in the middle is a median. Then I can draw 19, uh, 18th century bell curve distribution. And all the programs are built to trade out those levels. Okay? So I want to, um, I am, well, you know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to go through, I'll finish this because it's not just about uh, all, the, all the years of experience and work I've put into but there's an opportunity to actually uh, uh, see it traded live. And um, Yana will put in a link. Uh, we'll, we'll open up the room tomorrow morning for 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And you'll see, uh, again, you know, you don't want to judge on the profit. You want to judge on the accuracy and the risk controls. Make sure that those are in place when you're evaluating somebody. So this toolkit is actually going to come with what you just saw is just the order flow sequence tracker. So there's multiple filters within that. I mentioned the block trades. I mentioned the aggressive trades. There's going to be the point of control or actually value within each bar. The volume composite, you saw that. There can be an audible component. We put a wave file in it where we get popcorn or tweets or something. And you set it with a size. And if you're away from the desk, it starts, you know, tweeting or, you know, or let you know some buzzer that size is coming in. Uh, the static volume profile. Vol all, the vol all the volume profile analysis. Delta. Delta is the difference between the buys and the sells. And delta is, can be over time. So you can see these are negative here, positive here. 
you can, I like to use that on a fractal. So I like to use 30 minutes, 60 minute chart with a delta on it. And then I like to use a small minute chart where um, I find a little pullback opportunity in the direction of the main delta. So, um, the at market tracker is going to measure not just the amount of buys and sells, but the aggressive ones. Those are hit at the market uh, versus um, limit orders, et cetera. Value area, another profile concept. Value area is going to tell me the 68 to 70% range of the previous day. Those are going to be levels I want to start to stock as price trades into that level, and then I want to take a trade off of that. Perfect example was that crude trade where it was trading up at top at that 103.40 area. That was considered value. Tried to pierce through, got rejected. That's a short back down to support. Settlement deviations, I mentioned that. Inventory and trade imbalance. Obviously, there's a lot here, a lot of thought, a lot of, um, as I mentioned, 10 months, 10 months putting this all together. Um, otherwise, I would have just bought an off-the-rack, you know, off-the-rack deal. But when you can't find something that fits on, on the rack, you have to get it tailored. So here it is. Now, this would be amazing uh, by, in itself. But what's more important is the education on how to, how to use it. So I did over 10 hours of videos on institutional order flow basics. How to discover an edge in any market. Very similar to what I showed you there. Just trade like a, a business owner. You want to buy and sell goods, buy, buy goods at a discount to value, sell goods at a premium to value. How about installing and setting up for Christ? That, that's, that is 80% of the thing where, you know, I, I don't even know how I'm using this uh, indicator that I just bought. How many, how many of you have done that? So there's installing and setting up, and actually there is a concierge service uh, to help you with that. Getting to know your tools. Okay, great. Institutional signal reading. How to read, what does that block buy mean? What does aggressive selling mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything unless it's in a proper trade location. So all of those numbers don't mean a darn thing until you are able to identify trade locations, and I show you how. Practice trades and cheat sheets. Now, if we did just the indicators alone, $3,600 plus the 10 hours of on-demand video, $2,100. $5,700, but big, big opportunity to, to uh, catch this on the ground floor, $2,997. And at the end, Jan is going to put in a link to purchase this. And this is not a lease, by the way. You don't, this is not overhead you have to cover every single month. You own it and all the upgrades. Even on the, it's actually optimized for NinjaTrader 8. And there's a lot more opportunity for this in the, in the NT8 that we actually have to wait for, by the way, because uh, it, they're so advanced. So there is a, a money back guarantee, 100%, uh, no money asked. And with that, I'm going to go into the order flow sequence factor, which I talked about and showed you the selling sequence and that it's, I'm going to reiterate, you know, I mentioned I would get to this and I promised I would, so here it is. Order flow is not about time and sales or just about time and sales. It's all about the patterns, the data mining, and I call that the order flow sequence factor. Using filters to correctly decode volume, you can find aggressive block trades and you can, under, by now that you all understand what price is, you always put it into context of value, you can stop getting stopped out. And maybe you can trade three contracts in crude with only $120 risk. Now, don't ask me how much you can make on that because I have no control over that. All I can do is get into a position where there's a high probability that an institution is going to join me after I'm in, which is always nice. And then I just move my stop accordingly. We call it smart stops, and we use volume profile analysis to do that. So never lose sight of the market again at what the institutions are doing. I highly recommend that um, this is the only tool out there uh, available, by the way, so uh, that understands um, and tracks institutional markets and order flows like this.
So I highly understand that you at least take a look at it. And as I said, Yana will pop in a, um, a link for that. So let me get to trading with small accounts, OK? I want to develop the levels real quick based upon volume analysis, opening range, balance area, all, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Yana just popped in uh, the link to see this live in in action. And as I mentioned, you know, do your due diligence. Um, check the testimonials. Um, you know, ask yourself, well, why is it that there's a, quite a few institutional guys involved here? Well, we've surrounded ourselves around a genius, a mathematician, a quant. And if you look at any of the best hedge funds, they've all got a quant. And, um, and uh, it, because why? Because the ma market is all about numbers anyway. It's not about a, a rosy, it's not about a rosy research paper. R remember what I said in the beginning. It, there, it's set up for you to fail, including the low barriers to entry. It's set up for you to fail and provide liquidity and conditions in that day. Okay, so based upon these levels, I have 240-minute chart, four-hour chart. You want to at least look at uh, the, the time frames that institutions trade at, which is 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 240 minutes, you know, daily charts. So you want to take a longer term perspective. And then when you have your homework levels, you're going to wait until it hits one of these levels intraday. And then you're going to look for that sequence to occur. And you're going to take the trade intraday. And you're going to control your risk because you can see and identify what the numbers are telling you to do. That's the process. Anticipate it. Anticipate a level. Wait for it. Confirm with the actual order flow and then execute when risk is manageable for you. I don't know what your level of risk will be versus your account, but on average, most folks come to us with 10 ticks. Or let me ask you, well, on average, how many points or ticks or dollars do you all risk per trade? I'm going to bring up this binary tomorrow, or for tomorrow. And a binary is a, simply a derivatives contract to buy and sell. And there's a market on it. There's going to be a market maker. But the beautiful thing is, is that this market, Nadex, is transparent. It's transparent on the fact that there are not a bunch of um, uh, market makers in there scamming, scamming your ticks. But on the other side, there's a larger spread. So what market makers are actually there to provide liquidity as well. Okay, So that's why you can get down to the pennies. But what if you could just cut out the middleman and actually get a better price? The membership here is a floor membership. So you're trading on the floor, not on a virtual floor, with other members. And you put out a price that you deem fair. And you wait for that price to be accepted or rejected. And if it gets accepted, guess what? You have a trade. Hello, that's called the auction market. So tomorrow I have, looks like I have time just to do one market here. I'm coming into 103s. Now, where is, everybody tell me, please, based on, on this 240-minute chart, where's the nearest point to value? Where do, where do bar charts overlap themselves? Where do bar charts consolidate and trade around a price? At this level up here, 10340s. At this level down here, 10240s, right? OK. So I have two levels identified. And I've not identified them by price. Understand that. I didn't identify it by price. I identified it by value, where buyers and sellers got together for 4, 8, 12, 20 hours almost. 
almost 20 hours buying and selling around this area. So I'm going to go. Now, the beautiful thing about this is let's say I put on 10. I bet that market's going to trade above 102.50 tomorrow. Well, that's not a really good bet right yet. Right yet. But I do have a level 102.50. So because if I put this on right now, look at the spread, and then if I go buy, my risk per contract is actually the money I put up, which is $83. So I only have to put up $83. But guess what? My profit's only 17. That's not a good risk reward. I don't like it. I think I can get it cheaper. So as the market comes in, I'm going to be looking at this opportunity to buy it better than probably 50. If I can, let me show you what happens if I can find 50. So if I go to 103s right now, let's see, I bet that it's going to trade above 103. Okay? It's already trading at 103.23, so it's obviously above 103. So this almost sets a statistical number. The market, you can do in options markets, you can buy, you can add the two together and you come up, you know, this and that. And this is basically about a 60% probability that it's going to trade above 103 by the close tomorrow. So I have all day for this to happen. If I did that, I can go in it for every contract for $64 and my return is 36 because the most I can make is 100. The most that I can lose is what I put up, 64. So, uh, I think I'll wait on that too. Let's see if I can do, if I went into 103.50, now there's down to a 36%, 36.50% probability that it's going to trade above 103.50. Now, of course, the risk is going to be better. It's going to be my max loss 40 to make 60. Well, I like that. I do like that. Uh, those odds, but I do think that we're coming in a bit to this zone, this zone right here, 103, about 103.13-ish. And so what I'll do is I'm going to track this, and I'm going to want to place a trade beneath that bid. So I'm going to put one in there at, say, now, nah, even, even, Better, like say 31. So 31 to make 69 per contract. Say I did five contracts. I'm, make, I'm risking $155 to make 345. I'm not trading price. I'm, pre, I'm trading logic. I'm trading value. There's an opportunity I have all day for it to close above 103.50. Is that going to happen? Maybe not. But if I can get this for 31 at 103.50, this is actually going to be worth. 50. And then everything above that is going to be north to 100. So I can sell out, take some off at 50, bank some, and then let the let a couple contracts ride. So sell three at 50, let the last two ride. Okay. Uh, join us tomorrow morning. Uh, obviously, we trade options, we trade futures, we trade stocks. But most importantly, we trade the way the institutions trade. We have trade management always in, 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 um, always in front. Uh, risk management is paramount. Take that, if anything, from this to make this in this business, to make it against the rigged markets. Control your risk. You will control your emotions. And then you can control your destiny. OK? Thank you all very much. Ayana? Hey, Morgan, how are you? What? Oh, hey, Adam. All right. Okay, very all good. Right. Thank, Thank you very, very much, everybody. Great presentation Good there. trading to you. Uh, Ah, oh, this is actually Adam. <laughs> How you doing?
Yep. Thank you very much. All right. Hey, everybody. We're going to take a little break. I'm trying to get a bill in here right now. So give me about five minutes and we shall be back. <laughs> 